Well, welcome back. You know, a lot of us, as we get in our older years, we turn to the um, role of caregiver for our, our parents and, and caring for them. And if you ask some caregivers, what would they change different if they had to care for an elderly um, parent and a loved one? Um, would they change anything? Well, maybe we need to start first with how do we take care of ourselves if we are a caregiver? And here to give us some great advice on that, our friend Carolyn A. Brent is joining us now. She went through this whole experience of caring for her father, and Karen, Carolyn is also the founder of A Caregiver Story. It's a nonprofit organization that provides free medical and legal resources for the public. So, Carolyn, welcome, and it's great to have you back with us this morning. Good morning, Carol. Good morning, Ronnie. Good I'm morning. happy to be back. Thank you. Well, you know, it's a new year, Carolyn, and I think it's a great time um, to start with, let's go to step one and then go forward from here for our viewers, because step one is us as a caregiver. A lot of our viewers are in that situation now or will be soon. So when it comes to taking care of us, that's not a selfish thing we need to look at as a caregiver. You know, a lot of caregivers, they feel... I can't take care of me because I got to take care of a child, my husband, my wife, you name it, we're taking care of everyone. But after interviewing over 1,500 caregivers worldwide, I ask everyone the same question, what would you do differently if you had to be a caregiver again? And I got to tell you, Carol and Ronnie, the first thing they said was, I would have taken better care of me. Because what happens when we're going through the caregiving role, we want our loved one to get better but chances are they may not get any better today may be the best day they'll have forever so what we suggest as former caregivers and the caregivers that are going through the process do not feel guilty and i'm going to repeat this do not feel guilty when you take care of yourself because if you don't take care of you how who's going to take care of your loved one so that's the the first uh, the first thing and then I'd like to just share uh, some really great ideas and steps that we like for sure uh, caregivers to know. And the number one is arm yourself with knowledge. When you arm yourself with the knowledge of what your love, that your disease, the disease state of your loved one or the chronic illness of your loved one, chances are you're going to feel better about caring for your loved one because after all the doctors are going to care for your loved one because that's why they went to medical school to to help you with your loved ones but what you have to do as a caregiver provide yourself with the information on the system how does the system work the medical system the financial system the legal system because caregivers the reason why they feel so beaten up they are actually fighting a system when let's say a hospital you know tells you to come get your loved one in the middle of the night I know that for a fact that happened to me and because I didn't know that that should not have happened I got to tell you Carol I went and picked my dad up mm -hmm. at midnight after he had a, a brain surgery mm -hmm. and my the reason why they have wanted my father to leave because dad had Medicare mm -hmm. and on Medicare if you're having uh, he had a systemic uh, a systemic um, infection and my father kept pulling out his IV so the hospital said oh you got to come get your dad because he keeps pulling out his IV and the Medicare is not going to pay for him to stay here because he keeps pulling his IV out now nowadays because I'm armed with knowledge they could not have done that they would have they should have tranquilized my dad or put him on something a sedative because if I had brain surgery I would pull out my IV too. Absolutely. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so absolutely. I pick my son up at midnight and I'm going like, where do I take my dad? And that's where I ended up end up taking my dad to a private assistant living. They charged me like $15,000 up front because uh, the, the, the first month rent was $6,500. And then they had all these other fee attack, mm -hmm. a $1,000 application fee. So wow. if we arm ourselves with knowledge, I tell you, Ronnie and Carol, mm -hmm. the caregiving uh, portion is a piece of cake when we have the knowledge before of to what to do, how to do it, and that's why the caregiver companion was invented because I want to arm people with how does the system work and Absolutely. how do you protect yourself. Absolutely. That's the case. Well, yeah. we're going to take a, a quick break, Carolyn. When we come back, um, we'll have a few minutes left to go over some of the checklist um, ideas that caregivers need to know. So stay with us, friends. We'll be right back with Carolyn A. Brent.